Donald Trump basically has threatened uh, GOP folks, people who do not vote to repeal Obamacare. I'm going to come after you. Tell tiny baby hands, see you, see you outside. What, 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 are the, what do the kids say? Catch me on the outside? Like, like, seriously, dude, like what? Like you out here threatening people like you some type of thug. He probably is. He's from Queens. He's, 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 a, he's a thug. Like he's from Queens. Like, let's just be real. Um, every bad like movie you've seen about New York, like mafia. <laughs> like, like, yeah, seriously though. He he's he's like, like let's not even let's not even pretend. What what is it they found? They found uh bugs, they found out the FBI had uh bugs um had wired Trump Tower several years ago, but they were they were they were wiring because they were they were they had a um they were investigating Russian mafia folks who were on site that the Russia stuff is a whole nother conversation, which I don't think I'm getting in with you guys tonight. But you know, the mafia, you know, the mafia, the thuggery and stuff with Trump, it's very, it's very apparent in things that he does. So this whole like, if you don't vote this way, I'm gonna come after you. My dude, separation of powers exists for a reason. So if there are Republicans out there, Republican leaning people out there listening, um, y'all better call your, your 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 reps. And there are a couple of different orgs that I like what they're doing. They tweet out like how many people in that jurisdiction could potentially lose their health care. And my my conversation, my comment to a lot of people has been that you need to be organizing people, not just, you know, sending Democrats emails like, oh, my God, Trump did this. So you need to donate some money so that we can brag about how much grassroots funding we have. But you need to actually be organizing people. And it's great that Bernie had the conversation that he had in West Virginia. Kudos. You know, there is actually Joe Manchin has actually been doing town halls and two count them, two of my sisters and Bernie have Given him hell at two different, um, I mentioned this over the weekend, at two different town halls, uh, Kachina Mooney, you know, gave him the one-two punch over um, the high rate of suicide as well as opioid abuse and medical marijuana legalization uh, in, at, at a Morgantown town hall. And Paula Swearingen, you know, she, she hit him where it hurt over fracking um, and, and other environmental issues, clean water, et cetera. So, so folks ain't letting ain't letting people off the hook. And 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 you know, shout out to 538 and other people who think it's a waste of time or a bad idea to primary Joe Manchin. Nah. He needs to not take people for granted anymore. And they need to stop walking over people. And Democrats who seem to think that it's okay because as long as we keep our seats and get a few more and beat the Republicans, everything is okay. No. People are tired of being walked over. People are tired of being abused, mistreated, and left behind left out of the conversations entirely. And this is not me on the whole bandwagon, like we got to go reach Trump's America. No, we just got to learn to talk to people about issues. And I say we, as any of us on the left, progressives, liberals, whoever the hell, however you identify, it needs to be done and need to engage people. So regardless of whether we give a damn about any of these Republicans sitting in the house, hell yeah, ring their phones off the hook the next two days. Don't let them have any patience. Forget baby tiny hands. Baby tiny hands, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Seriously, what's he going to do? He only won an election by... <laughs> by <laughs> like, what is he going to do? He acts like he has a real political enterprise, a real political capital to, like, really do something. What is he going to do? You know, you're going to... You're going to... They, they've made some revisions, right? And it's even worse for Medicaid than what it was before. So... You know, Trump is really trying to, because there are a lot of Republicans that are getting pushed back because people are realizing that, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Obamacare was evil because it had his name in it, which is exactly why they've called it Obamacare for six years instead of calling it the ACA to poison it to people. When people finally realized that they were going to lose something too, that they were being affected because you have Republican governors, you have Republicans that have actually gone ahead and authorized um, Medicaid expansion, right? You you have large segments. I mean, we've had so many news stories the last few weeks about how some of the places where people who been who have benefited from the ACA the most are in quote unquote Trump country. Um, and so no, we we can't. You know, if 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 the House passes this bill, you know. 
it, 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 it's, it's, it's definitely the beginning of the avalanche, right? And, and there are those who have been opposed to the legislation as it exists now. And that's more than enough. It's potentially enough to actually block the bill um, and, and not pass. And that's going to be, you know, the, you know, we, we, we listen to the debate with, um, with Ted Cruz and Bernie and, you know, they, 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 they keep trying to spin this as a mandate, as a mandate. It's like, dude, you got like 24% of the vote nationwide. This ain't no damn mandate. Right. Like, like, like y'all lucked up. <laughs> this ain't because people really believe in you. So, you know, and there are hardline conservatives holding out on this bill. Right. And they, they, they understand what they're doing and, and what game they're playing. But people ain't willing to fall on the sword because Trump wants to, you know, I don't know, threaten people. Like, I don't even really know how much of a threat this really is for folks. It's like, okay, you want to threaten us? All right, like who has more political capital? Like really? Um, I, You know, it's, it's just an interesting conversation, but it's real petty. It's like super thuggery. Um, and I know we can talk about how awful she would have been had she been in office right now. You know, I think she just would have smiled and like bought people like cars. Like, like I think I almost think that some way she would have had like a Oprah approach. Like, you'll get a car, you get a car, you get a promotion, you get a promotion, you get a TV show. Hey, you get an exclusive interview. Like, you know, he's definitely a thug and he ruined he rules with a baby iron fist. Um, it's like, this is what I want to do. That's, no, that's not how that works. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. This is just what I want to do. This is how we want to do it. This is what we're going to do. And they're ramming things through. And I think there was a piece yesterday, you know, thinking about just this whole conversation about entitlements, the budget, the way they're moving forward, um, that looked at possible changes to um, the Social Security program. So not Social Security, because a lot of people think about Social Security, they think about, you know, pensions, they don't necessarily think about disability. And that was the point that was made uh, by one of his staffers that that they may be looking at. And I'm not going to say too much more about it because that's actually that's actually my agency. That's actually my division of my agency. And so we do know that 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 we're being looked at and um, very closely. So that's all I'll say about that. But there is a pettiness that is happening and a lack of understanding or concern for how that actually plays into not just you know the workings of the government. Fine. They, they, they just want to shut shit down. They just want to shut it down. They aren't looking at what they're going to replace it with, what the alternative is going to be, or how that actually will affect the lives of other people. So I get we don't care for certain people in the political sphere and stuff like that. But at the same time, there are lives on the line that need to be not just protected and shielded from as much as this is possible, but like we need to help people have the voice that is necessary to change the conversation and drive the change that we need to see. So we need to engage people on these issues as they're happening and then build out that 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 base so that when we're trying to get X candidate in who is progressive, who is going to fight for the people, we already have that support built in for them. Right. Because we do have the special elections that we have, you know, coming up. Um you know, Kamal Khalid today, one of the uh, Our Revolution um, endorsed candidates. They had uh, local count, local races here in Georgia. Uh, I think it was City of South Fulton, um, City of Stonecrest, a couple of different places had elections today. So I have not checked to see what the elections are. But there are people who are already starting to get out there tomorrow. I'll talk with Lou Bratz, who's running for um, city council out of Lincoln, Nebraska. So so there are these people already out there, right? We, we've already seen these people already out there. They've already been grinding and stuff, but we need to continue ramping up our efforts. So we can't just say, oh, well, I don't care. Or, oh, she would have been worse or whatever. That don't really help us reach and engage people that we need to be reaching because this type of stuff that's happening, like it's great, but the Republicans... They're like rabid freaking dogs, right? They're not going to give up on this, you know, they're not going to get up this. There are like, uh, there are some hardline conservatives that that don't think it does enough to undo the ACA. Then there are more moderates who feel like it uh, imperil their constituents. No, I'm not saying that we need to go talk to the reasonable Republicans and try to get them on the side. We just need to ring the hell off their phones and tell them to do their damn job. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to en entice people to come play with me and be my friend. I don't care whether you like going back to the first part, the very first thing I said, we don't have to like each other. We don't have to be on the same page, but we can get some, we can get some work done. And one thing that we can get done is getting this bill shot down on Thursday.
I mean, should we be pushing for a single pair? Hells yes. Can we walk and chew bubblegum at the same time? Most definitely.